Welcome to Practical Python Programming. In this video, we're going to dive into our library a little bit further to see some of its functionality. In order to get started with this video, you'll need an instance of Jupyter Notebook in order to mirror our environment. You'll also need an HS110 smart plug with energy consumption monitoring, and you'll need to have the library installed, which we did in the previous video. Now to get going inside of our environment. I'll navigate to where I want to save my file, and we'll create a new Python 3 notebook. Now, this is a new library. We're probably not very familiar with it, so we can go back to our GitHub page and see what kind of documentation they have there. So previously, we ran this program right here, and that allowed us to see information related to the devices currently on our network. Now what we can do is scroll down a little bit further and we have a section about library usage. So we'll go ahead and run this first example right here, which is discovering devices. So we can go back to our notebook, paste that right in there, hit shift enter to run the cell that our code's in, and we'll see here from our library we're importing this thing called discover. Then we're running a loop and we're going to display everything that we discover. So we can see here, we have our light switch, and we have our smart outlet. The next thing we'll do is we'll go back to our GitHub page and see that we can query basic information. So we can copy all that, put that in a cell, and what we see here is we're going to import a couple more things from that library to include smart plug and smart bulb. We're also going to get a formatting uh, library, and then we're going to create a plug. Now to create this plug, I need to set the IP of the device I want to get information about, or the plug I want to create. So to do that, I'll come back up here and see that my smart outlet's right here with this IP address. So we'll come down here and type it in. 10.0.0.0. And I'm going to leave this information off for now, but that basically shows everything that our program ran yesterday. So we hit enter, and this will create a plug and print some information about it. So there we go. Now we know that our plug is currently working. So say we want to interact with this plug a little bit. You can type in plug, period, and then hit tab. When you hit tab in Jupyter Notebook, if there's other things you can run on it, we'll get a list of them here. So we can look at our list here. Let's say we want to run state. Hit shift enter to run that cell again, and it shows it's currently on. Well, I know my plug is on, so that makes sense. Now let's say we want to look at some other capabilities. And I see current consumption. That looks interesting. So I do shift enter again, and I get a bunch of information here. This room means I'm getting some data back that's not something that can easily be displayed. So perhaps if we run it again with parentheses, it'll run a function and we'll actually get a value back. If you're new to programming, you may not understand the difference between these two, but what we can do is type in help our item up here called plug and then hit shift enter again. This will display a help page or documentation that the people who wrote the library have provided for us. So as we look through here there's a bunch of information. Some things we might notice is here's a turn off and a turn on. You'll see that there's parentheses after here. That means if we want to use this option we need to have parentheses on it. So for instance we have has e-meter. Well, there's no parentheses there. So if I type in plug dot and I go ahead and start typing out has and then hit tab again, it'll help me autocomplete if there's no other options that have similar uh, similar spellings or similar words. So now we run shift enter and it returns true. It does have that. But if I want to say turn it off, like we saw up here at the top, turn off, we'll have to do plug dot 
I hit tab this time, it shows me all options that have TU. Turn off, I have to put the parentheses. And now my plug turns off. We continue to scroll down and see some other options. And we see current consumption, which we already called. We know that is a method to get that value. We also have get emitter daily data for daily, monthly, and then real time. This is the one we're going to primarily use for our program. So we'll go ahead and run that now. Plug dot get, and we want real time. We see here it does require the parentheses, so we'll go ahead and add those in. Now when I hit shift enter, we'll see we get current, voltage, power, and total. You'll notice here our current power is zero. The reason is because I just turned it off. If we go ahead and turn it on, our smart plug cycles back on, and if we run this cell again, we can see there is now power usage. This is one of the cool things about Jupyter Notebook is we can move back and forth between cells and execute code that we've already executed. So my TV is currently off. My plug just reset, so of course the TV's off. We can see the power usage is 1718 and that is watts. Now if I turn my TV on and give it a minute to boot up, while it's booting up we can run it. Look, I now have 62 watts. So what we can do here is we can actually compare the power usage when the TV's on and when it's off and then using that information we can start to calculate and track our actual screen time. Now this assumes the TV is actually turned off and not in a screensaver mode or that someone's currently interacting with it all the time it's on, but it gets us started for our project. In our next video, we'll take that difference between the power, whether the TV's on or off, and we'll introduce the idea of file input output in order to save the state every time our program runs.